scattered over 700,000 square kilometers of glistening Southern Pacific Ocean, 176 small tropical islands, which make up what is known as Tonga. And one, it seems, was chosen for the location of a rather amazing ancient structure. One of the most mysterious megalithic monuments in the world, an ancient trilithon known as the Megalith Gate of Hahamunga. The mainstream academic explanation for the site is as follows. Hahamunga is a megalith trilithon that was built around 1200 AD, built by a king of the time as the entrance to his royal compound, Heketa. As with many intriguing and confusing ancient structures upon Earth, if you dig further than mainstream attested views, you will often unearth another opinion, often suggesting a far longer, far more astonishing tale set much farther back within our past. And the Tonga Gateway is no exception. Although mainstream archaeology, through native folklore and currently accepted, chronological knowledge of the previous inhabitants of the island suggests that the Tonga Trilithon is but a mere 800 years old. There exist three rather large problems with this conclusion. Until, of course, erosion inevitably takes hold, drawing a line between a discernible archaeological feature and an apparent geological one. The Tonga Gateway now consists of three coral limestone slabs, each still weighing in at around 40 tons. Three rather large elephants in the room for mainstream archaeology. Like with all other trilithons dotted around the world, the documented primitive capabilities during modern historical timelines will continue to demonstrate a lack of credibility to the school-taught fanciful tales given for their construction. On the contrary, these sites indicate a once far more capable civilization left somewhere within Earth's very distant past. For example, there are many legends linking the Hahamanga Gateway to Maui, as William Corliss astutely put it, Maui is but a label, slapped upon everything found within the South Pacific which cannot be explained." End quote. Additionally, to disassemble the phony public narrative further, Corliss's own research, other explorers of the island, along with Eric von Daniken's compelling and comprehensive studies of the island, found that islanders, although willing to tell tall tales to tourists, lacked any reasonable replication skills at a later date. Put simply, they were lying. Indeed, although they spoke of a king some 800 years ago, the massive stones, being a gateway to his Heketa, after extensive exploration of the island by many people, especially behind the gateway, which the entire site is seemingly focused in on, no trace of a Heketa has ever been found. Some specialists who have studied the erosion patterns upon the coral stones have come forward with claims that the Tonga site is a ruin far older than currently thought, and that although the stones are rough in appearance today, they were much larger and also smoothly cut into squares using an unknown, ancient technology. This, some claim, may have happened as far back as 10, maybe even 100,000 years ago. Was the Hahamanga Gateway some form of ancient stargate? Why place it exactly where it is? Why build it exactly how it was built? Who would go through such effort of transporting many 40-ton blocks of coral to this small island, then somehow constructing this once enormous and mysterious structure aligned as a gateway that led to nowhere? Or did it? Ohio, the United States of America, nearly 12,000 years ago. The Cherokee would descend from Northeast Asia to inhabit the Americas, upon arrival they were welcomed by a race of giant beings. They would become known as the Moon-Eyed People, a race of people far older than humans. It is said that they were responsible for the ancient ruins that now dot the landscape. The Cherokee called them the Moon-Eyed, due to them only being able to see in the dark, during the day they had very poor eyesight. From the book, Old World Roots of the Cherokee, Chapter 5, What Kind of Indians Lived in the Territory of the Choctaw and Chickasaw. According to local traditions, and confirmed by excavations of bones in Tennessee, a race of white giants. The Choctaws told of a race of giants that once inhabited the area, and with whom their ancestors fought when they first arrived in Mississippi. 
It was always believed that these were just stories passed down from generation to generation. The tribe, for example, had a legend of the Mastodon roaming the Great Plains of America. However, over the past few years the remains of this mythical race have began to surface, confirming the Cherokee's accounts. This story was told by Comanches in 1857, many moons ago, a race of white men, 10 feet high, and far more rich and powerful than any white people now living, inhabited a large range of country, extending from the rising to the setting sun. Their fortifications crowned the summits of the mountains, protecting their cities in the valleys. They excelled every other nation on earth, either before or since, in all manner of cunning handicraft, they were brave and warlike, ruling over the land they had wrested from its ancient possessors with a high and haughty hand. They drove the Indians from their homes by the sword, and occupied the valleys in which their fathers had dwelt before them. The remnants of their fortresses, and the crumbling ruins that surrounded us all, is what remained of their mighty cities. In agreement, the Indian trader Adair often referred to the Nanish Tahuolo as departed white ghosts, vested with spiritual powers whose descendants were priests and magicians. Navajo legends speak of the Starnake people, a regal race of white giants endowed with mining technology who dominated the West, enslaved lesser tribes and had strongholds all through the Americas. The remains support legends of this race of giants having multiple sets of teeth, and having been over 10 feet in height. The remains have been officially exhumed, but alas not officially covered in the press, it is as if we are now at a point of paradigm destruction. Artifacts that tell of such beings are no longer successfully hidden, they are now just ignored. Following, some archaeological evidence found regarding this giant race, they practiced a mother goddess religion, they possessed copper, not bronze, axes, polished slate tools have been found, including fishing plummets, which were apparently regarded as sacred, belief that the grandmother moon was the repository of souls, a diet of mainly shellfish and seafood. The building of fish weirs on North American rivers to trap migrating eels, this is a form of fishing known as elvering, but due to plummeting stocks it is now widely regarded as detrimental to the ecosystem. Certain vegetarian habits, wild rice, for instance, inscriptions on artifacts, especially pipes, often buried with the dead, use of coal and petroleum, weaving and looms, knowledge of seafaring, mathematics and engineering, including canals and irrigation, burying of a dog with a child to guard the latter in the afterlife, a language apparently Afro-Asiatic and close to Semitic tongues, and kingcraft, nobles were buried in seated positions on thrones surrounded by a coterie of their retainers. They also had flatter heads and six fingers and toes. Were these giants highly advanced? Did they build the pyramids? There is also many contradictory tales across the earth, which speak of primitive, cannibalistic beasts, enslaved and used for their strength, yet no legend has ever been corroborated with such compelling archaeology as the moon-eyed people of Ohio. Where these races of giants came from, or indeed where they went, is a question which needs to be answered. Giorgio Tsoukalos goes deep. The only way the ancient astronaut theory can be disproven is when the extraterrestrials show up and say we were never here in the past. <laughs>